Okay, so I saw this video where someone wrote a web scraper and I think it was like 20 lines of code or something, which gave me the idea. I thought maybe it would be a fun or maybe a dumb challenge anyway to see what is the shortest in terms of lines of code web scraper I can write that gets a couple of bits of information out. So what we're going to do is the rule is uh, it has to be an HTML site and we're going to get a minimum of two bits of data across the whole page. Uh, you'll see what I mean. So the, this is the site we're going to be looking at. Uh, all I've done so far is I've checked that this is actually uh, completely HTML. We can get this data out and I've started to look down here uh, as to where it is. This is what I was checking out. So the other thing I've done is import requests, uh, pip install requests HTML. That's what I'm going to be using because that's requests and a HTML parser all in one. So let's get that. Let's do import requests. Actually, we need to do from requests HTML import HTML session form from cool now that's done we can do s is equal to html session and then we'll do r is equal to s dot get and i've already copied the url and that's it there so now we want to start looking at here so we found i looked earlier and i came all the way through the whole of the uh, website you can see as we go down the whole kind of like bits of information get hovered uh, go turn blue when I hover over them and I settled on this div so you see it disappears and then inside of here I had this UL class Metro Mosaic which I guess is the um, <clears throat> the way they described it and there's all the list items in here which appear to be all of the stories so let's go ahead and copy this because we're going to be going here first so it's um, posts is equal to r.html.find because we want to find things in this HTML we've just downloaded. And it was a UL uh, unordered list, Metro Mosaic. First is equal to true because we don't want to return a list even if there's only one. And now we want to, we can actually chain the find on here. Let's have a look in here. Uh, H3, okay, H3 has the post title. Is there text in here as well? Yeah, H3's got the post title. So you see this whole tag has the link and the title. So those are the bits we're going to get. So there's an a, H3 and an A. So we can actually just look for that straight away. Dot find H3. Now the beauty of this is that when you do first is equal to true, it will only return the first one that it finds. But find, this is going to return a list. So if I was just to print posts now, we should get a list of elements. There we go. You can see them all down here. That's good. Okay, so now we can iterate over that list. So let's do for post in posts. And let's print uh, post.text. Is this the text we're after? Well, it looks like it is. There we go. There's the text straight away. Now I know that that was in this span class here, but there's no other text within this H3 element. So we're going to get this all anyway. If there was other text in this H3 element, you would just do post.find and then find the span class and then this. But we don't need to in this case. So the next thing we need is the link. So we want to do uh, post.find. Uh, you see, you could do post.links, I think. What that's going to do, there's all the data. You can see that it's returning this as a dictionary, which um, isn't ideal really. Because if we wanted to do something with this data, that's kind of kind of get in the way. So what we want to do is we want to chain that find and then go for the A tag here. So if I go back to the site, so we're going uh, within the post, which is our H3. We're looking for an A. There's only one, so we don't have to worry. There's only one there. That's good. And then we want to get the actual attribute from it. We still want to do first is equal to true because if we don't, it will return a list of just one. Uh, and now we can do, I think it's dot ATTRs. Let's try that. Uh, close that out. Nope, too many. There we go. Let's see what we get. Okay, cool. So you can see if I move this up and out of the way, uh, you can see down here that after the uh, name of the, um, there we go, the article. We have the actual attributes for the H, the A tag, the H, the A tag that we looked at. And one of them is the href, which is the link. And you can see all of it, there's some, a couple of other ones there. Now to actually just get the href, we can just reference it because it is a dictionary. 
we see down here that little curly bracket just on the side of my camera there is that dictionary so we can actually just ask for the href okay so let's run that and i think that's worked yep there we go so we can see we have all that information there we can actually make this shorter though we can do some list comprehension here so let's just say uh, data is equal to now we just want to smush all this down into one big list comprehension so we're going to do let's make it into a tuple so we're going to have the opening brackets there for our tuple and we're going to put this inside of it so we're constructing our tuple and then we're going to do for post in posts without that comment there so all we've done is we basically squash down our for loop into uh, one long list comprehension and now if i print data because we've got these brackets here, we are, these ones, sorry, in there, we're creating a tuple. So we're returning a tuple of the data. So now you can see it, if I just zoom right in, there's the first bracket. So we've started our list, there it is. So that's our tuple with the title and the link to the post. Now, there we go, I would say that's seven lines of code. Let's move that one away so I can call it six, and we're done. So that took me all of about five minutes to do and six lines of code. Now, you could pretty much do this with any HTML website, but obviously there's a lot more to web scraping than this. So if you wanna find out more, check out this video on the screen now for much more in detail videos.